And next I want to make a flat portion that I'll end up bending and rotating around to make the um, major portion of this design. So I'm going to go into the top view here. And if you want to zoom out, this would be a good spot to show this, if you want to zoom out to see everything, you can use another macro, ZEA, Zoom Extents All Viewports. And that's a really good way to see if you've got something off in left field that you didn't know about, for instance. Okay, now I'm going to start by making a circle. And this circle, I'll place it at a grid snap. And then for the radius of it, I'll type 0.5 so that this would fit around uh, our wire work that we've already done perfectly. And then I'll draw a curve. And again, I've got my grid snap on here. And I'm going to draw this little sort of asymmetrical teardrop shape. And maybe I don't want my grid snap on, so I'll turn it off for a little bit. And I think I'll turn it back on while I'm in the midst of drawing the command so that everything is nice and symmetrical. It's kind of a funny looking curve at the moment, so let's turn on those control points and with grid snap off, do a little bit of massaging of this, make this a little bit nicer. So I'm thinking about something that would be uh, fluid looking and catch the light if made out of uh, reflective material or metal. Something like that. And maybe these will get scaled down just a little bit. And if you want to scale uniformly, you can hold down Shift while scaling. All right, I think that's going to be just fine. Could tweak it all day long, but I should not. So I'll turn off the control points there and then just align this by eye so that's roughly giving the same amount of, of material around the circle, something like that. Now I'm going to select both of these curves and I'll use the command planar SRF. Now planar SRF also is an icon and it's right here. And the cool thing about it is that if I go into perspective here, you can see it cuts out that circle for me. So both of those curves were selected and then I ran the command planar SRF and it does that for me automatically. Now I could delete these curves, but I could also throw them on another layer. So might as well do that. I'll go into the layers panel, right click over layer one and choose move objects to this layer. And then I'll just hide the visibility of layer one so that we don't have to see those curves, but they're there if we ever want them again. So this is our trimmed surface, and I want to position this trimmed surface around this pipe that we have down here. So what I'll do is I'll use the move command and a center O snap. So I'll enable my center object snaps, and then I'll use the move command, which happens to be hooked up to the letter M already. So I can just type M and enter, and the point to move from will be a center. Let me zoom in here so you can really see this. To get a center snap, you have to mouse over, have your cursor right over the edge of the circle. So that's the center snap. That's the point to move from. And the point to move to, which is what the command law dialog is asking for, will be a center snap around that central column of the dangle that we made. So I just aligned those perfectly. And I'll just move it up a little bit with the gumball. And so they don't fall off, I think what I'll do is put a sphere at the end here. Again, with a center snap, something like that. Now this and this are two separate objects. And if you hold down Shift when you click on stuff, you can add to selection. Now if I want to make these one object, I need to do what's called a Boolean union. And that would be this icon here. So now these are one object. And again, we can do Command and Shift to click that and move this up and down if we wanted to lengthen that. 
This sub-object modeling technique, where you hold down Command and Shift, is best used on linear transformations. Now this surface, I want it to be a little bit thick, and I'm going to use um, a gumball technique for this as well. I'll start dragging it, and then I want to limit it to be one millimeter thick. So I'll type one and enter. And actually, I changed my mind. That looks a little too thick, so I'll type 0.5 and enter. And then if I want this to be a solid, I'll hold down Command and then release the left mouse button. So it's 0.5 thick. Like that. Now I want to round these edges before I make any copies of this. So to do that, I'll use the fillet edge command. And fillet edge will be in the solid menu. So we click and hold on the Boolean union icon there and you'll see variable radius fillet. The command name is fillet edge. And I'll click on one and then the other edge and then enter. And you get a little preview of what the arc will look like. So a fillet is a piece of a pipe, you can think of it that way, and it sweeps along those edges and trims everything it hits. You can see these arcs are really big, so this actually wouldn't work at this radius value. So I'll click Set All, and I'll type something less than half of the thickness of the part. So I'll type 0.2, like that. Now you can see those handles represent a much smaller arc. And then I'll press Enter, and there we go. Now I'll take this part and I want to bend it down. So I'll go into the right view and I'll use the bend command. You can see a bunch of the other commands. These are deformation commands in Rhino. And the bend one is right here. And in the command dialog you're asked for the start of the spine. I'll make the spine start around here and then I'll hold down that shift key again to temporarily enable ortho and I'll bend this down just about like that. And then I'll go into perspective so you can see this. Now those deformation commands will add isocurve structure, that's what these little black lines or the thinner black lines, that's what those are known as, isocurves, and uh, they're the control point structure or they indicate control point structure of the underlying surface as well. So if you have a lot of isocurves, you may want to disable isocurve display for this particular display mode. And I can do that in the display panel. And you'll get a little bit better display speed by doing that. Now I want to array this or pattern this in a circle. Now there's no pattern command in Rhino, but there is an array command. And this icon here, which shows you nine little boxes, if you click and hold on that, you can see all the different array commands. And one of them is called polar array, which would be an array around a central point. The center point will be a center O snap. So I just have to mouse in here until I can get some center O snap. And then the number of items, I think I'll do six. And the really cool part here is that we're going to use a Z offset. So the Z axis is straight up and down right here. And I want that offset to be the same as my part thickness, so 0.5. And we get a little preview of what that's going to look like. So you can see they're all stacked on top of each other, offset 0.5. And I'll just enter, right click to accept that. Now this doesn't look all that bad, but I think I'd like this a little bit longer. So I think I'll finish the design by selecting all these parts, and I want to group them together so that I don't have to select them individually. I'll use the group command. And this is the icon for it. And then I'll use cage edit, which was another one of those options in the deformation flyout there, the flow along surface flyout. So I'll do cage cage edit, and I'll use a bounding box, 
and press enter three times. Now you have a three-dimensional cage of points that will distort the objects that were the captives. And you can drag a little fence selection around them and scale, hold down shift to make it uniform. So you can really have some fun with the design after you've got it laid out like this. I think maybe these two middle rows could get scaled a little bit as well, make this slightly less wide. And there you go. I think I like that. So this cage with the points, we can turn off those points with F11, select the cage, and throw it away. We don't need that any longer. 